Good day everybody. In this video I would like to talk about rock mass rating, how we can obtain it for rock mass and how we apply it for tunnel applications. Uh, we'll start with this schematic diagram where we have a tunnel, so that's excavated rock mass, and we have some support here. This part is support. So there are two concepts uh, that we use. The first is active span, which is S, and that will be uh, the largest uh, area of the tunnel, uh, the one that is not going to collapse uh, when we excavate it. So uh, in this case, there is no support given. And uh, uh, the second concept is uh, stand up time. So let's say that we have a tunnel with um, span S. So how long uh, in time uh, is going to stand uh, like this without any collapse? So there are two things uh, that uh, engineers uh, have used in the past for many, many years. And um, they, they were able to come up with the chart. Uh, one of the chart is shown here when you have stand up time in hours uh, against the roof span. So uh, you will see that uh, it will give you some idea uh, about how long the span can be uh, without collapse or if uh, we need any support or not. Uh, for example, uh, if we would like to have a tunnel with a roof span of one meter and uh, uh, you see that uh, uh, if we look at different times, it's going to be stable and here it says no support required. So if we have, uh, let's say, a rock mass, which is pretty weak, and then let's say, for example, we want to build a span of eight meters. So uh, in this case, uh, you will see uh, that, will, that will be immediate collapse and the tunnel will be unstable. Also, you will see here it says rock mass rating and you have numbers here, 20, 30, 40, 50, right? Um, and then you will see that support required. So, uh, for most of the rock mass, unless it's really um, of high quality, uh, we will require support. And based on the numbers uh, of this rock mass rating, uh, we can uh, have some estimation uh, about the roof span uh, and also what support is required. So in the next slide, I'm going to talk about rock mass rating. Uh, I'm going to talk about major components of this rating and we're going to look at some example and see how we can use this rating in practice. So um, this is the chart that uh, we call the rock mass rating. Uh, you uh, may have seen it in the literature, maybe a slightly different one. Uh, the idea is uh, to include the most important factors that will affect uh, the strength and stability of rock mass. Of course, the first one will be the strength, and here you will see the strength of intact rock. So that will be a very small samples. So these samples we can test either in point loads uh, uh, or uh, unconfined compression tests. And based on the results, so you will see that uh, if we have a 10 MPA point load index, in this case, we're going to have this rating of uh, 15. So uh, you will see as the uh, point load index decreases, so which means that rocks uh, become weaker, the rating will also decrease uh, here to 4.2. So the same thing um, is also valid for unconfined compressive strength. So if we have a rock with very high unconfined, uh, unconfined compressive strength, we're going to have very high rating. So uh, when a UCS is pretty low, you will see that the rating will be too small. Right. So um, next factor will be RQD and uh, I have a video how we can estimate RQD. Please watch that one. Uh, also, if we have a high values of RQD, which means that not many joints in rock mass, we're going to have a relatively high rating of maximum 20. Uh, when uh, RQD goes down less than 25, we're going to have very small rating. So um, the idea is that uh, the better the properties are, the higher the rating is. So next one will be joint spacing. That's pretty important. Uh, we're going to look uh, at the spacing, every spacing in meters. Again, if spacing is, uh, is uh, very large, 
more than two meters um, joints between each other. Uh, in this case, rating will be pretty high when we have lots of joints and the spacing is um, pretty small. So in this case, you will see that rating is pretty low. Uh, conditions of joints, of course, is very important. So we actually need to go and look at the joints in the field. Uh, we're going to look at the surface. You see that uh, if uh, the surface is rough, in this case, uh, rating is higher. When we have a slick sided surface, um, the rating will decrease. Again, if we look at the filling, if we have a separation, no, uh, no separation, it will also affect the, uh, the rating. So if there is no separation, the rating will be high. If the separation between uh, discontinuities, the rating will decrease. If we have filling in, the, um, in between discontinuities, in this case, rating will decrease even more. And another important factor is groundwater. So uh, there are three different ways to look at groundwater. We can look at the inflow in the tunnel. So in this case, we use liters per minute. Uh, we have a joint water pressure divided by major in situ stress. And that will be in this example, the one that we're going to do later. And sometimes we don't have much information. We just look uh, at uh, general conditions, is if it's a dry, damp, wet, um, or flowing, dripping, right? So uh, based on the water conditions, uh, we're going to assign a rating. And uh, again, if we have a dry rock mass, no water, no water pressure, in this case, the rating will be high. Uh, if we have lots of water, the rating for this component will decrease. So in the end, we'll need to sum it up. And uh, then at the higher the rating, the better. Maximum can be 100. So you will see that uh, if we have a rock mass rating from 81 to 100, uh, rock mass class is A, which is a very good rock. Um, then uh, if the rating goes down from 61 to 80, it will be B. Uh, C, D, and if it's less than 20, that's actually very poor quality uh, of rock mass. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at this example and see how we can use uh, rock mass rating to estimate uh, um, the properties of rock mass. And we'll also talk about the tunnel applications. So I'll explain that in my next slide. But first, we'll start with this example. So um, we'll need to carefully read it and um, um, we'll start with the strength. So it says that the strength uh, of the intact rock mass is 75 MPa. So we know that this is a, a UCS, unconfined compressive strength. So it's not point load. Point load cannot be uh, that high. So now we see where we have uh, 75. We have it here. That will be 75. So uh, our first um, number for the rating will be 7. So now we're going to uh, check RQD. So it's given here RQD at 70%. Uh, RQD 70% will be here. So uh, second uh, number will be 13. Then uh, uh, next one will be uh, joint spacing. We're not giving joint spacing, but what we're given is we have eight joints per meter. So we can estimate the spacing. Uh, please watch um, one of my other videos about spacing, how we estimate spacing based on the number of uh, joints. So um, that will be uh, one meter divided by eight joints. I uh, will give roughly 0 0.125 meters. So that will be uh, average spacing for this rock mass. And uh, let's see where we're going to have it. Um, we're going to have it here, right? So that will be in this range. So number eight. So next one is um, conditions of joints. So let's see what we have about conditions of joints. Um, joints, critical joints, and uh, highly, highly weathered with slightly rough surface. 
so okay that will be here this one slightly rough surface and highly weathered so in this case the rating will be 20. Uh, sometimes we have description that doesn't fit in each of the box so maybe we have a little bit uh, here and a little bit uh, here so in this case you can take the average 15 right so uh, you have to uh, exercise your engineering judgment so in this case it's pretty straightforward so the number is uh, 20 and uh, the last one is um, we know that groundwater existed at the tunnel depths uh, with the groundwater table 15 meters so what i'm gonna do here it's uh, surface and here we have uh, 15 meters and here we have um, uh, groundwater level right so uh, what we're going to do is um, we know that uh, 70 meters here we have a tunnel so what we need to do we just need to find this uh, power to pressure and divide by stress so this will give us uh, this one so power to pressure divided by in situ stress so we will need to find power to pressure so um, i have videos how to um, uh, calculate power to pressure based on the um, depth and location of groundwater level uh, i'm going to put it in the description of this video for you so it will be uh, 9.81 which is unit weight of uh, water and then so how much water is above the tunnel 70 minus 15 and that will give us approximately 539 kPa. Okay, so that will be a uh, water pressure. So now we need to estimate the stress. Um, for stress, we are given the density, which is 2.3 grams per cubic centimeters. Uh, we need to convert it to a uh, unit weight. I um, have no space. Um, okay, maybe I'll try it here at the bottom. So um, uh, that I'm going to write that uh, stress it's uh, uh, unit weight of uh, rock times uh, Z which is the depth will be 70 so uh, unit weight it's uh, density times uh, um, G which is 9.81 gravitational acceleration and times Z so that will give us uh, um 2.3 times 9.81 times 70 that will give us uh, 1577.8 kpa and um, now we're going to find the ratio so a unit uh, sorry water pressure divided by stress um so um, it will be 539 divided by um how much is that 1577 so that will give us approximately 0 0.34 okay so this is the number we're after and this is what we're going to use to um uh, identify the rating for groundwater so we will see that uh, 0 0.34 is uh, in uh, this range right from 0 0.2 to 0 0.5 so in this case the rating will be 4 so rating 4 okay so i'm gonna go to next slides uh, and then we'll also see um, how we can uh, include uh, the tunnel um and the application to the tunnel okay but uh first of all um we're going to uh, know that uh, rock mass rating that will be the sum of uh, all the ratings that we have just obtained 7 plus uh, 13 plus 8 plus 20 and plus 4 
Okay, so there is just a little bit more which is left. Uh, that's uh, adjustments uh, for the tunnel. Uh, what we know, what was written in the previous slide, and I put it here on this slide, that the tunnel is being driven from west to east. So I have two schematic diagrams here, which is uh, drive uh, uh, with the bearings and uh, or deep or uh, drive against the deep. So uh, we'll see that um, in this case we have the tunnel is uh, being driven from uh, west uh, to east. So this is going to be west east. So uh, we're going to uh, drive tunnel in this direction. And what we're also given that uh, there are bedding planes uh, with the orientation of uh, uh, bearings of 90 degrees and uh, a dip is 40. How do I know that uh, uh, this is deep direction? Well, uh, watch my other video on the deep directions in deep, how we estimate it and how we use it. So if we have three digits, three digits here, so this will be a uh, deep direction. So uh, we will see that uh, on this diagram, uh, I can draw that line and then I will sh show that 90 degrees will be here, 90 degrees. Uh, which means that uh, that will be bearing planes in this direction. So you see that uh, we drive a tunnel uh, in the same direction as we have um, bearing planes. So in this case, uh, if we look at this table, uh, we will find out that we actually drive with deep, drive with deep. And then you will see that we need to also check the deep uh, what is the angle of the dip? We have two options from 45 to 90 degrees and from 20 to 45. So we are given 40 degrees. So this is the dip of bedding planes. So we'll see that dip is uh, 40. The conditions uh, we call favorable. So now we're going to look at this table. And we know that um, we deal with tunnels. And we know that the conditions are favorable. So for favorable conditions, we have to uh, subtract uh, uh, two points. So in this case, I'm going to write negative minus two. So um, if we calculate everything, all the parameters, we'll see that uh, the rating with the adjustment for the tunnel uh, will be 50. So this is how we use rock mass rating and how we adjust uh, um, the tunnel. And uh, um, we just need to know uh, if we drive with the deep or drive against the deep. We also have this uh, strike parallel. So sometimes if uh, uh, bearing planes go this direction or this direction, so we're going to have uh, one of those things when strike parallel to tunnel of axis. Okay, so uh, that's it for this video. I hope uh, now you know how to use rock mass rating. You just need a little bit of practice. Um, sometimes you don't know exactly what number to use for the rating so that uh, you will have to exercise your judgment. Uh, good luck for that and have a nice day. Bye.